We're good? All right. Good evening. Good night, everyone. Um, thank you for your patience. Obviously, draft's always a long night. We were wrapping up a couple things, uh, hopefully for your benefit, so I can talk about some more. So uh, first, just want to thank my front office. It's The draft is always a, a culmination of uh, not just weeks and months, but really years of, of work. Our guys hitting the scouting trail and, uh, you know, scouting these guys, preparing for, for a long time. So um, Wes Wilcox, uh, amazing job. Phil Jabor, who, who really runs our entire draft process. Uh, Paul Johnson, the rest of our scouting department, our analytics group. Uh, unbelievable job by those guys. Um, uh, obviously, going into the night, a little different position than last year, uh, which is a good thing, uh, and I hope it, a lot of that in the future. Um, but uh, you know, I think the same thing that we're always looking to do, which is um, use the draft free agency trades. Uh, obviously, this is one of those three to improve our team, and we're always going to be, um, you know, aggressive uh, yet disciplined when the time comes, and um, you know, continue to help us uh, by adding players and, and adding avenues that we can improve the team. Um, tonight, obviously, an important step there. Uh, a couple things I'm going to read so I don't get in trouble with the league. Um, uh, as part of a deal to be finalized later, uh, the Kings are trading to the Mavericks the draft rights to Olivier Maxon's Prosper, the 24th pick. Uh, per league rules, I am not allowed to say anything more. Um, we've also agreed in principle to acquire the draft rights to the 34th pick, Colby Jones. The trade is not yet final, uh, but I can talk about Colby, uh, who is a, a, obviously a productive and, and smart utility player, uh, a defender, a two-way player, um, somebody that we're, we're really excited to add to uh, the, the culture that Mike, uh, myself, and the rest of us are, are building here, uh, really a winner. Um, won almost two thirds of his games at Xavier. Uh, so we're excited to bring him in. Uh, also excited to welcome Jalen Slauson to the Kings. Uh, Jalen uh, was the uh, SOCOM player of the year this year, Divas player of the year, uh, I believe two years ago. Um, so excited to bring those, those two guys uh, into our organization. Um, with that, uh, I'll take questions. Come on, Sean. Sorry about that. Uh, just, um, I guess, what could you tell us about just the draft overall? Maybe um, the vibe in that room, obviously a, a busy day for you guys, probably on the phone. Just how can you kind of sum up the day with the activity? So, It's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, buzzing, uh, I think, for, for the most part. And then last year we got right into it. We were just trying to figure out who was going to be there at four. Uh, this year we were sitting and waiting, so uh, it was a good it was a good feeling, a little slow, and then it and then it just uh, goes crazy, especially in the second round. But um, the the great thing our group does, uh, obviously not just on the evaluation of the players, but but all the things that could come up, we're prepared with uh, papers of information, tools. Uh, we have our group does an incredible job with information across the NBA. Uh, which is a huge currency and allows us to move around the board as needed and, and figure out what's going on and uh, just to keep a track of the picks and, and who's got what is, is a Herculean task. They do a great job. So um, obviously a lot of long nights, uh, weekends leading up to this to be prepared, but um, you know the energy of draft night keeps everybody through. Uh, the, I'm sure they'll sleep well tonight. Really, we're, we're open to anybody who's, who's proven that they can win and help us win. Uh, this year happened to be, uh, you know, two guys that have been in college for a few years. But, um, you know, Jalen obviously uh, had, had a big win in the tournament. Um, I, I mentioned some of his awards uh, and a guy who's been able to show it on both ends. And then, you know, Colby is uh, just one of the best two-way players, uh, a winner, and, uh, you know, those are the things that we always look for. And uh, we know what Coach Brown, his staff value, uh, what me and my staff value. And, um, you know, especially with guys like Colby that 
we have what our scouts love. We, we got one of our scouts, Greg Stratton, uh, lives in Cincinnati, calls it the Cincinnati-based scouting region where I, I don't know, he can touch, I guess with, with UCLA and USC going, he can touch uh, like, I don't even know, a hundred of the top schools uh, in driving distance. And Xavier's right in his backyard and he's seen Colby a lot. And uh, Greg's one of the best scouts in this league and uh, really cool to, uh, that he, he, he was able to see this guy a lot. And then our, our analytics uh, evaluate him, see all the, all the stuff that he does, all the little things um, that we pick up on. And when those two things overlap, as we've talked about, uh, makes my job easy. Hey, Monty, I know you can't talk about the 24th pick specifically, but what is the balance of the prep work that you do and the ideas that you have coming into draft night of, of the direction you want to go versus other teams make moves and make changes that create opportunities on draft night and trying to pounce or take advantage of that? It, it's about our, our group does a great job of having a, a plan, uh, really a long term plan, as we talk about. It's not you know, one thing after another, all these things flow right in to each other. And, uh, and so we, we know we have the draft, we have free agency, we have trade. Those are kind of the three prongs that we can do. Um, but trying to balance having that direction with not being too rigid so we can react to what happens uh, during the draft or in free agency or at the trade deadline, any of those times. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a balance, but our group, um, you know, really does an incredible job of, of being ready, and, and we, we play a lot of those scenarios off of each other leading up to it. Uh, Monty, again, I know you can't get into certain specifics. I won't mention names or anything like that, but it sounds like you may have created some financial flexibility uh, tonight. I just wonder if you can talk about that aspect of, of this, um, what, what your goals were there, and, and how maybe you might be able to use that flexibility moving forward. Yeah, we'll continue, obviously, uh, July 1 when, when free agency kicks off. Um, you know, we'll be able to, to figure out what our options are. But, um, you know, really I think the, the, the main thing tonight is uh, that we added two guys to our team that um, we think can help us, you know, not just on the defensive end but on the offensive end. But, um, you know, some things that we'll talk about when that time comes. Hey, Monty, uh, two questions for you regarding Colby. Just to start, you know, a guy that shot a lot better from three this year than years prior and, and not the best uh, free throw numbers. So what, what gives you confidence that the three-point shooting, shooting you saw this year is real with Kobe? It, you know, we, our, our scouts do a great job of, uh, and I mentioned Greg and others who, who do a, a bunch of intel work, but Kobe's work ethic and, um, you know, the, the person that he is, his character, those are the types of things that we like to see for guys as they improve throughout college and that they'll continue to improve uh, when they get into our, our situation. Um, but it's all the other stuff that Colby does too. Um, he's, got, he's got great touch. Um, the shot improved, obviously, this year, but uh, that he can get in there and make a play with a pass, an offensive rebound on the offensive end, and then defensively uh, can guard, you know, up and down. Uh, you know, probably not 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 a lot of centers, but um, you know he's strong, he's big, and um, you know he's going to be very versatile on that end as well. But um, you know, obviously the shooting is is a, a big part of the NBA these days, and uh, we like to see the growth that he's shown. And how much do you value that versatility that he supplies on both ends? You know, playing on and off the ball on, on both sides of the floor, and how important is that as a connecting piece? Yeah, we've got uh, as you know, we got two two all NBA guys uh, that we that we're building around and um, so guys that can help them on both ends of the floor um, they're they're going to do Domas and, and Fox are going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us on the offensive end but guys that can be connecting pieces guys that can finish plays uh, guys that can make the intermediate play the hockey pass um, especially with the offense that coach Brown and coach Triano have um, we just want we want high IQ guys that can come in here and just figure out a way to contribute no matter who they're on the floor with. Monty, you just mentioned that your Domas is presumably one of the guys you're building around. Where do things stand? Um, there's been a lot of discussion, I guess, about a, about a contract extension with him. Just where do things stand on that front with him? Yeah, Domas is obviously uh, an incredible player, and uh, you know we want him here long term. And when the appropriate time comes, we'll, we'll be talking to him about those, those ways to keep him here. And with, with Colby, Dante DiVincenzo is somebody that onlookers have sort of compared him to. Is, do you get similar vibes? Is, is that um, the, the type of player that, that you're looking to acquire, someone who, has, who can add some of, those, some of those things to your team? 
Yeah, I think with Colby, uh, there are a lot of guys, especially as we as you watch the playoffs, the guys that are versatile, that they can um, they can do a lot of different things on the floor because um, you know you don't know what's going to be thrown at you. And you know, Colby showed that at Xavier uh, through his three years, especially this year as he took on an even bigger role. And um, so, you know, I, I have uh, no doubt that he'll be able to figure that out at the next level. Yeah, Money, um, how much was tonight about setting yourself up for free agency, for, for trades and everything else, especially the way that you were able to manipulate sort of your salary cap stuff? Um, yeah, I think for us, uh, you know, it's we, – we always, we always value – the optionality and flexibility when we can acquire it. Um, and uh, we've got, I think, a really, it, it, this was a great season, uh, you know, for, for a lot of reasons. Um, and we, we want to have a long, a long playoff run here and uh, continue to compete. And uh, to do that in today's NBA, you have to be able to, uh, to build your team out, not just in the very near term, but over the course of many years. And so, uh, we're always we're always having that balance, right? Well, what can we do to add to the team now? But how does that affect what we can do going forward? Um, so we think uh, you know what we were able to do tonight, and what we've done uh, going back to the deadline in past years uh, will give us a lot of options, not just this summer, but as we get into next year. Uh, just looking back overall again, the totality of the draft. Did you did this kind of plan out go the way you guys may have planned? Um, was anything surprising about the way things went tonight? Always surprises, always surprises. Um, Phil Jabor, who's our VP of player personnel, who um, does uh, a great job. But uh, we always try draft draft night. We got all our scouts in town. Uh, we try to have a dinner. And, and uh, one of the games he has is earlier or later, where are guys going? And uh, without fail, we'll always look back saying, you never know. Uh, and uh, you know, certainly opened up uh, at some point in this draft. and. Um, by the same token, our guys, I think, for the most part, had a had a decent sense of what may happen, and um, you know we were ready to pivot when when different things changed, um, and uh, especially when you're picking later in the draft, uh, it's it's hard enough to predict it for what was what's going to happen at 24. You got no shot, so you just got to do the best you can, uh, be prepared for those scenarios, and um, you know credit to my staff for you know knocking it out of the park. You obviously know much more than than us and the fans in terms of what lies ahead for your future uh, after tonight. From what you were able to pull off tonight, I would have. Is it safe to assume this was a home run, great deal of success uh, as you guys try to plan for what's to come this later this summer? I think I, I hesitate to to say those things because ultimately it's only going to be a home run if if we're able to go out next year and produce on the floor and you know eventually we're going to be held to an even higher standard in the playoffs which is what we want so that that's going to be how we're graded but um yeah we're, i think we're happy with with what we're able to do tonight um and uh now it's on to the next thing and how we can continue to to get this team uh ready to take the next step and um so happy with you know the guys that we added what we we're able to do and um you know we'll, we'll be judged by by the wins any plans or ideas of what to do with the, the two-way contract spots that you're able or willing to share? It, it, uh, the the two-ways have been, a, I think, a really great addition. Um, it's, it's, I think, really good for teams to be able to get guys into their system. And um, we've, we've done a great job uh, with Stockton, you know, finishing first in the regular season and, um, you know, winning on, at that level too and developing guys. And um, like I said, we're going to have to, to – to build this this thing sustainably, we're going to have to find guys on those two ways that graduate. Um, there was, I'm sure, a team in the NBA uh, playoffs this year that people point to that has had success there. We're going to have to continue to follow that path to, to build out around um, the really good players that we have. So, um, you know, we'll see where that shakes out. But uh, those two ways are valuable, and uh, we'll continue to treat them as such. Uh, Monty, any update on uh, Domas and the thumb and, and whether that required surgery? Um, there was a report today, I think out of Europe, that, that he was not going to play uh, in FIBA competition this summer. Can you speak to that and, and just where he's at with the thumb? I know, I know Domas is, is working out. A, a lot of our guys, uh, you know, are already either here in our gym or, or uh, somewhere else getting their work in. 
Um, I, I know Domas obviously, you know, played through that that thumb injury. Um, you know, we do expect him to to be good to go next year, but not sure exactly where it's going to be at this summer. But I know he's already working uh, whatever he can. Monty, your first draft, uh, you're number 12, uh, next draft, number nine, and then number four. How, just, how much different is it to draft 24? And how much different is it when you have a team that was third in the West? And how does that change sort of your mindset going into draft and free agency? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, obviously the, the pressure and uh, all those things uh, ramp up when, the, when you're in the lottery. Um, and, um, you know, our, our group has done an incredible job. The, the three picks that we've had in the lottery have allowed us to, to build the team that we had this year. Um, the downside of winning so many games is you got to wait a little longer for your pick, but uh, we, we've seen some really good players in this league, um, you know, uh, including, you know, some, some very notable examples who, who have been picked where we were picking this year in those areas. And so, um, you know, we take it as a challenge and uh, there's, there's uh, a lot of opportunity out there for us to improve the team. And um, when you have those, those key centerpieces in place, like we got with Foxy and Domas, uh, you know, Keegan had a great rookie year, Kevin, on and on. It allows us to find guys that, that fit into that system. And I think with Mike, um, Jordy, Jay, Doug, all the way down, what they've done uh, with our group, um, we, we know what they're looking for. And the players know what to expect. And uh, so it makes, you know, makes our job a little easier, a little focused on uh, who's going to fit in there. And, um, you know, obviously it, with, a, with a lottery picks, it's a little different what you're looking for uh, later in the draft, guys that can come in and, um, and help, whether it's right away or uh, develop in Stockton and, and help us down the road. We're going to need those guys. Um, and we're going to have to continue to do a good job even when we pick later in the draft. Yeah, Monty, so a lot of buzz around Sasha this summer. I think Jay, Mike, uh, Jordy went out to go watch him. How impressed were you from his performance this summer? And obviously, I think when the draft's over, you guys can start negotiating in that deal. How much of a priority is it for you and your front office to uh, get a deal done? Yeah, uh, Sasha had a great season. Olympiacos had a great season. Um, and uh, they, they were a uh, fantastic organization. And, uh, you know, welcomed us as we, as we came to, to see him. And, uh, you know, when we get to free agency, we'll, we'll have all those free agent conversations. But um, it, it was fun to, to see Sasha and, uh, you know, the great year that him and his team had. About the, uh, obviously, the promotion of um, uh, Anjali Ranadive as well as Lindsay Harding at the Stockton level. Yeah, Lindsay uh, has been here uh, since before I got here uh, and done a, a fantastic job on uh, bo both uh, the previous staff and, and Mike's staff. Um, you know, the guys really respond to her. She's had a, a big hand in not just our, you know, game plans and those things, but in, in developing our guys, getting to work on the court. Um, obviously a great basketball player in her own right, as we all know. Um, really excited for her. I know she's excited for that next step. Um, you know, big, big shoes to fill, given what we did. And, uh, you know, for Anjali to come in, Paul Johnson, uh, was the GM last year, the executive of the year for Stockton. Uh, Anjali is the assistant GM, had a huge hand in that. And, uh, you know, she's, she's ready, and we're excited for, for her to partner with Lindsay. And, um, you know, I think we, we talked about this uh, more in, in theory when we came in, but we expect to win all up and down the organization, right? We've won in Summer League. We've had some good preseasons. We've had good G League seasons. We, we've had now you know, some success in the NBA. And um, so we're going to need to con continue that. Um, you know, we, we expect to win all up and down, and we expect to develop our, our players that go to Stockton. And it's a huge part of what we do. I think um, the last thing I'll mention is just Lindsay being a part of Mike's staff and now going to Stockton is something we really value. Um, they have a great uh, relationship, great communication, and um, that's huge for us as we uh, – continue to, you know, build this thing from 1 to 18. All right. Thank you, guys. Get some sleep.